A question I've gotten a lot recently is, do I like comics? And it makes me realize that a lot of you have no idea that I ran a podcast for three years that was about geeky stuff, including comics and comic book movies and just basically nerdy stuff like that. So quite an archive for you to check out if you want to. It was called Geek Media Core. Uh, but uh, let's talk about kind of what kind of comics I'm into. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike here today to talk about a little comic books. Uh, this would just kind of be a quick hit, nothing in depth or anything like that. But like I said, the question keeps coming up a lot recently. Uh, I think I wore a Batman shirt for one of my reviews. And everybody's like, does that mean you're into comic? Yeah, yeah, a huge time comic. What guy wouldn't be into comic books, right? Uh, basically, my first books as a kid were comic books before I really got into the heavy hitters you see behind you. Yeah, I've been reading comic books since I first learned how to read. Uh, my brother got a bunch of Star Wars comic books, and I, and I read those a lot. Conan. Conan was one that I read a lot, but it was when I was probably six or seven, and one of the neighbors had just like a huge collection of comics, because I'm not going to lie to you here, we kind of grew up lower middle class, and my parents weren't buying me comics, so I kind of had to borrow from friends and stuff like that. But uh, a lot of the ones that I really got into were Spider-Man, X-Men, and then everything else DC Comics. Uh, I, I, not one of those people who are like brand loyalists and they feel like they've got to pick one. Dude, I liked them all. I just kind of lean DC Comics because that's really what I had the most access to as a kid. Uh, besides, like I said, X-Men and Spider-Man, maybe some Avengers. I didn't read a ton of comics. And I know everyone, after the movies blew up, everyone likes to pretend now that they were big comic book readers for Marvel. When I was growing up, if it wasn't X-Men or Spider-Man, it, it wasn't getting read, really. Uh, but I, I've read I read every single issue of Spider-Man up until Dan Slott took over. And if you guys know who Dan Slott is, terrible writer. Uh, and, I, and I'll fight you on that. I don't even care. I don't even care. I feel like he has completely made a comic book that I read for decades completely unreadable. And uh, yeah, that's just kind of where I am right now with that series. And X-Men, I kind of read up through the 90s, uh, early 2000s, and kind of bailed uh, around then. I think I think Joss Whedon's run on X-Men was like the last one that I really got into. Uh, and then Civil War, obviously. But uh, yeah, that's about where I was with Marvel. But uh, DC Comics, man, uh, Batman, Superman, The Flash, one of my favorites, Green Lantern is something I didn't get into until about four or five years ago. The, the, the gentleman, Danny, that I ran the podcast with, Geek Media Core, uh, he is the one who would always constantly suggest that I try uh, Jeff John's run on Green Lantern. And it was absolutely amazing. I could not put it down. It was it Jeff John, And that's when I realized anything that Jeff John's did was awesome. He made Aquaman awesome. And I will, again, I'll fight you on that one too. Uh, basically, the Aquaman movie that came out, uh, while he looked different, they pulled a lot of those storylines from the Jeff Johns uh, run of uh, uh, The Trench, which is fantastic comic. Basically, King Crown of Atlantis, uh, The Trench, anything like that, really, really great stuff. But Watchmen is probably my second favorite comic of all time behind uh, Preacher. And uh, yeah, I'm, I am more of a DC, Vertigo, Dark Horse kind of reader. Uh, really, really, really into that stuff. But I don't know if you guys can even see this. I'm going to hold it up for you. But I read all my comics now. On my iPad, and here's kind of what I have like recent or big collections. So you can pause that and look at that if you want to. Uh, but mostly DC stuff. Uh, I, I really a big fan of Buffy and Angel, the TV series, and they've continued those uh, for years on, uh, in comics. The Angel season six comic was amazing. The Buffy season eight comic was fantastic, uh, and, and I think the Buffy one actually just ended. Now I'm about a season behind a season on those comics for that, but. Uh, Daredevil. Anything by Frank Miller, uh, really, really into. I think that's why I like the Daredevil Netflix series, and I didn't really care for any of the others, because they drew a lot of inspiration from the Frank Miller run on Daredevil, which I think is just as good as anything Frank Miller ever did. Now, everybody thinks Dark Knight Returns when they think of Frank Miller, but I think of, of Daredevil. Uh, Stephen King's Dark Tower series, uh, that, that has really been done well in comics, I think a lot of things that people struggle with, with Wizard and Glass, that's the fourth book in the Dark Tower series, he really, really helped bring to life with those comic books of the Dark Tower. Uh, Hellblazer, John Constantine, 
one of my favorites ever, and that's why I get so mad that they cannot get this character right. I felt like Matt Ryan, the actor who played him on the, the short-lived TV show, fantastic, but they didn't actually follow the comic book, and I'm sorry, I understand the rules about not being able to smoke on network television. Put it on cable, because John Constantine does not not have a cigarette in his hand at all times, so that drove me crazy. Uh read tons of Justice League. I, I can't tell you how much Justice League that I've read. Uh, the Injustice series that they brought up a, a couple years back that had Superman actually, it was, if Superman had went evil, really cool Elseworld kind of material there. And I, the art was fantastic. And it just, it showed for all those people who were like, oh, DC just doesn't have the characters that Marvel, you're crazy. You're crazy. And you've clearly only watched the movies because Warner Brothers is idiots and they don't know how to handle their properties quite like Marvel Studios obviously knows how to handle their properties. And I don't feel like that'll ever change. And I think the, uh, the box office for Birds of Prey proves that Warner Brothers does not get it, and their fans are not pleased that they don't know how to run their properties. Uh, like I said, Preacher, fantastic. Probably my favorite modern comic is Saga by Brian K. Vaughn. Absolutely incredible series. The problem is the guy writes like six issues a year, and it takes forever for the next arc to come out. But uh, it's got some of the most impressive art, I'll show you. It's absolutely just beautiful art, and yeah, I went I went uh, fully digital on my comics about four or five years ago. I think uh, I know that that's kind of blasphemous to to some people. Uh, it just I have so many books and I didn't have the room for all the comic books. And I'm not the the board it and, and keep it out of sunlight person. I'm not that guy. I, that's just not my style. So I, I really just I finally just went digital and just just art is just so gorgeous. I love it so much. But Saga is really, really great if you haven't read it. Just, just be prepared. You're going to be waiting a long time. And you'll probably just have to do a reread every time a new art comes out because he takes so long to do it. Obviously, Star Wars comics. Uh, I just recently got The Boys. I liked the Amazon series, but did not read it. Obviously, I love Garth Ennis because he did Preacher, which, again, absolutely incredible series. Uh, even if you are... Uh, a, a very heavy Christian values. I understand that there be some things that you are against in there, but it's still a very good work of fiction. So just give it a try. And do, and if you, do not watch a television series if you love the comic. Woof, woof. Uh, Jeff Johns run on The Flash, classic Flash. Obviously, I've read a lot of that. Sandman, uh, another Stephen King. They did The Stand. I, I read The Walking Dead up until about a, issue 150. And I think the show just made me so exhausted with it. I, I haven't finished it. And that actually just, that, that, that run finally, just Robert Kirkman, he finally just ended that run. So I'll probably plan on going through that. I already mentioned Watchmen, X-Men. Why the Last Man? Very, very, very ahead of its time comic. I think that's another Brian K. Vaughn. He's a fantastic writer, if you guys don't know that. Um, they're actually making a TV series of Why the Last Man, too. And really, I don't know if you can do that today, uh, with the, per the current political climate. I'm not quite sure if it's going to be like the comic at all, so I'm not expecting a lot. And, of course, like I said, X-Men, I've got about 300 issues on here that are just kind of like my favorite arcs. And that was, to me, the epitome of, of Marvel Comics was X-Men and Spider-Man, and that's why I kinda always stuck with those. I also got this White Sand, which is the, the Cosmere stuff that I'm doing for, for, for the Brandon Sanderson Cosmere stuff, because the to, to buy the graphic novels were just so expensive. So I just had to go with the uh, with the digital comics of them, and uh, or I guess they call them graphic novels. But you guys get the point. Yes, I am very very into comics. I don't read them as much as I used to, at least not the current runs. I really started getting into Image Comics there for a while because I felt like Marvel had gone. Sorry if you guys don't like this term. Marvel had gone so woke it was almost unreadable to me. Uh, it was all about political message over having fun. And I'm sorry, I read comic books to have fun. I know that there were always political ideals in comics. I know this. I know that Stan Lee was a big time mark for it. I know this. I just feel like it's a little heavy handed. And if I'm going to be honest, lopsided at this point. So that's kind of what drew me away from there. DC Comics, if it wasn't Jeff Johns, I felt like it was just okay. Uh, Scott Snyder did really good runs on Batman recently. And then when he left, I was able to kind of walk away from Batman. I didn't get too much into Rebirth. I tried it when it first started. The launch comic of Rebirth was really cool. I like the idea of tying Watchmen into the uh, the the main universe, but I just I don't know. I just never really I didn't really keep up with it because it was just so much. And after the New Fifty Two, I was so heavily invested in the New Fifty Two when it came out, and I had so many series. I was following all that, 
and it just kind of they just kind of shit the bed with it. So I wasn't willing to really give them another go. So if I'm talking about the two Titans right now, yeah, I'm probably obviously always going to stick with DC Comics just because, like I said, it's hard to beat what you grew up with, and that was the main one that I grew up with. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I, these days I find myself leaning more towards some of the independents. Like I said, Dark Horse, uh, IDW, and uh, Image, things like that, Vertigo. And I feel like they really do the best stuff. And uh, I'm rereading Lock and Key right now because I wanted to talk about it on the channel because the Netflix series just dropped. And in case you guys don't know, Lock and Key is a series written by Joe Hill. That's Stephen King's kid. And I've only read one Joe Hill book. It was Nosferatu. I liked it quite a bit. But Lock and Key was the first thing I ever read by him. And it's just as good on a reread. Uh, it's really, really fantastic. Uh, to kind of let the cat out of the bag, I watched the first episode of the Netflix series. That's all I'll say for now. I'll save it for that review. But I'm going to be talking about that. But if you guys want me to ever talk about more comics on the channel, I can. I just, you know, anytime I talk about anything that isn't fantasy on this channel, it kind of struggles to find an audience. Uh, my science fiction stuff, besides The Expanse, hasn't really took off. Uh, the Red Rising stuff doesn't do hardly any numbers at all. And it isn't just about numbers. To me, it's about discussion. And so it isn't about views or clicks or anything. I mean, it's about discussion. If it's not generating a ton of discussion, I don't want to make videos on it. Even my Dresden file stuff is kind of struggling to, to find its footing. So if it isn't just traditional or modern fantasy, it seems like it has a hard time finding its footing on here. So I don't talk about it that much. Because uh, I don't know if you guys know, a lot of work goes into producing these videos. And it, uh, as much as I like to talk up to you guys about them, if you guys aren't talking to me in the comments about them, I'm not going to keep talking about it. You know, that's why I bailed on Lightbringer. That's why I, I bailed on Demon Cycle. Uh, not reading them, but making videos about them. And that's why I've been apprehensive to do anything about Dune. Because Dune is my favorite book of all time. And if science fiction doesn't really get a lot of footing on here, why am I going to talk about it? Because a Dune video would probably be an hour long, at least, for me to talk about that book. So that's another reason I've kind of put it off. But again, if you guys want to hear me talk about any kind of comic series or stuff like that, hey, I'd love to. I'd love to talk about some of these comics, some of my favorite arcs, some of my favorite villains, some of my favorite stories, some of my favorite writers, uh, some of my favorite artists. So that's, 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 that's a really big one to talk about, some of my favorite artists, because as you know, a comic is only as good as its art sometimes. You can have the greatest writing in the world, but if it's dingy and bland to look at, kind of hurts the medium so guys what kind of comics are you into is there anything you'd like to hear me talk about drop in the comments let's talk about these things man i love to geek out with you guys about comics more so hit me there guys i'll talk to you then